and welcome to the Happier Marriage Podcast, a podcast for spouses longing to have a happier marriage so they can feel more connected, desired and supported. Now, to start the show, here is your host, and Sherpa, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach, Kingsley Grant. Hey, I'm glad you're here. And this is episode 85. And, and today we're going to talk about how you can help your hubby build his business without turning your home into a war zone. And today I'm going to share with you two parts to this episode as to how you can help your husband do just that. You know, what I've seen and experienced over the many, many years I've been working with couples as a clinician, licensed marriage and family therapist, and a certified relationship coach, I have heard stories upon stories upon stories where many homes of these high-achieving business professional husband like yours are in what we would call a war zone, right? They are in a war zone for a number of reasons. And maybe as you're listening to this, your home feels like that. Maybe the tension, the um, interactions you're having with your husband, maybe the way that he's approaching you, you're approaching him, creates this kind of feel like you are in a war zone. And is that anything that like what you're experiencing right now? And if you were to look at what might be the reason, what would you say that is that recurring theme or issue that makes this feels this way? Possibly what I'm going to talk about in this episode, maybe, maybe one of those things or a multiple things that I mentioned, maybe your situation. What I find is that one of the reasons is because um, this husband, your husband, and the high-achieving business professional husband is wanting to spend his time pushing forward, trying to make this business work. He feels the pressure. He knows that if he doesn't get it right, He'll feel like a failure. He wants to do the best he can for you and his family, the children. And so he feels an enormous pressure as you can just imagine. Actually, you don't have to imagine. You know it. You're living it with him. And so you're wanting him, though, to spend more time with you and the children. And you, rightly so. Rightly so. You would not have me hear me talk about why that is unfair. I think it's really a reasonable request on your part because you, you're the one who seems to be holding everything down and your husband seems like he's not caring or unattached or, um, you know, maybe he doesn't have the same interest like you do. And so every conversation turns into an argument. And it seems that these arguments tend to be over the same thing it's only presented another way, right? So instead of feeling like you are a partner to your husband, you are on the same side with him, you feel like you are adversaries, right? You feel like you're adversaries. And so instead of complimenting each other, there is this sense of or feel like you're competing with each other. So as much as it is important that your husband gets some help to create more of a work-life balance and and adjust so that he can be more there with you and work through that. As that as much as that is true, and I believe he ought to, you as his wife need to take a different approach than the one you are possibly taking. You know, I love the scripture verse in Proverbs 14, verse 1, where Solomon says this. He says, A wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Proverbs 14, verse 1. Imagine that. He's saying that basically, as much as this wise woman, and I would say you are that wise woman, who wants to build your home, who wants an outcome where your husband feels as if he's supported by you, 
his, your, you, get, you, you had his back and he can put his energy into his work as much as he feels that and he knows that you are proud of him and you want him to succeed. He knows that. But maybe inadvertently, you're tearing down with your own hands what it is that you want to build up. And we're going to talk about that and expand on that and share with you those two parts right after this. So the big question is this. How is it possible that you have a happier marriage when you feel like you've tried everything? Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. So, as I mentioned today, we are tackling what I call a doozy, right? How to support your husband's business dreams without sacrificing your family's sanity. Your sanity. You know, it's, it's like juggling flaming chainsaws, right? Like we, while you're wearing a blindfold, it's exciting, terrifying, but it's also absolutely doable if you have the right training, the right skills, and you've been doing this for some time. You know, I've watched sometimes these people at these, you know, um, shows where I, I watch in, in just in astonishment at the incredible concentration and skill where these people are juggling, you know, whether it's a, a chainsaw or a, um, you know, swords or hatchets or you, you name it, right? You've seen that, haven't you? And you wonder, man, how do they not hurt themselves? Well, it comes through training. It comes through them following certain pr- protocols and pr- certain procedures. And that's what we're going to talk about in this um, episode. Now, as you heard earlier about that, one of, one of the things I've done is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, but also, too, I am like possibly to some degree like your husband, right? Here's why. I, too, um, you know, I'm married almost for, as of this recording, this episode, 38 years as of this um, episode. So I've, I've really been around. And not only that, it's almost two decades of working with couples and basically myself raising two children who are now young adults who went through all the stages your child your children probably are going through right now. And so I, I've really experienced in my own life some of these very same things. And I also have seen the battle scars of business-driven husbands and and the casualties that come as a result of that many times when they've neglected their families and they don't have things in the right priority. One of those things I try to help these husbands to recognize is that God is calling them to lead their family, not to leave, but to lead them and to lead them up close and personal, not from a distance. And God is going to hold them accountable. So I try to help them to recognize the importance of of listening to his wife and hearing what she has to say. But I also have spoken to the wives and explained what I'm hearing, I'm saying to you today, of what you can do differently, okay? Because I believe that we can avoid the carnage um, of many of those who have not heeded what it is that you're going to heed as I share with you in this episode. So we want to be able to build a a fortress of harmony, right? Even when your, your hubby is chasing his entrepreneurial unicorn. So what we're going to do first and foremost is make certain that we ditch the blame game, right? We got to ditch the blame game and we got to discover what I believe is a secret sauce of how you can support your husband without turning your home in a, into this war zone, this chaotic circus, right? So we're going to talk about communication and teamwork and we're going to sprinkle in right there, which is most important, the faith component into this conversation I want to have with you. So let's get into then part one. Um, There's two parts I mentioned. The first thing is I want you to 
recognize that, and this is a spoiler alert, spoiler alert that you're not going to get your husband to do the things you want him to do if there is constant bickering or nagging. You don't want to be like nagging Nancy because that is what will drive him crazy. Here's what happened. He already is feeling the pressure of wanting to succeed at what he does. And now he's having to walk around with guilt feelings, feelings of guilt, because he's not there as he wants to be there. I mean, I can tell you it's a very difficult place to find yourself in. I know for me, when I know that I want to be home with my wife and my children, my heart wants to be there. And I recognize that I keep on telling myself, Kingsley, you know, eventually you're going to get this right. You're going to get this right and you're going to have enough time to spend with them. But can I tell you something? That this has been going on for quite some time. And I really realized that time was slipping away from me because I was under this illusion, I would say, I mean, <laughs> illusion, delusion that somehow I could wait until I've got it all together, then I'll spend time with them. What I realized that they were growing up very fast and time was slipping away. And so I had to make a decision that, you know what? I got to find a way to find some work-life balance. Thank God with my wife's help and her patience and her, you know, constant just kind of um, pointing out the importance of me being there. I was able to change some things. And that's why I believe that some of the things I could have been you know, I could have done today or where I'm now working on, I could have done before, but at what price? At what price? So let me just kind of talk about what, um, to understand his, um, the part one is understanding the, the hustle beast, understanding what I call the hustle beast. Now, your husband, as as any other guy, right? We are not the most emotionally expressive creatures. That's, Let's settle that once and for all. And you know that. So we want to settle that issue once and for all. Does it make it right? No. Should we, should we be more emotionally expressive? Yes. You know, I, I find that, you know, one of the things most of the husbands I've worked with is on the area of vulnerability. Because we have this notion for the most part, for the most part, that being vulnerable in a way that shows our emotions means weakness. And so we are guarding against that. So it's not that we are bad people, but we are guarding against wanting to come up, come across as being emotional, as being weak. And so one of the reasons why we don't become vulnerable is the association with that. Okay, but here's what also happened is that when we, as a husband, are to laser focus on building our businesses, right? Um, it's not that we don't care about what's happening and we don't want to spend time. As I, said, I just mentioned that. We, our heart, I know it rips my heart. It, it, it grips my heart when I'm not being able to show up for my family when I needed to be there because I'm so wanting to get this business right. And I want my, uh, you know, because I, in my mind, which is true, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for, not just for me, it's for my family. I want to have a legacy, right? A legacy. And I want to set them up right financially and so on. So it's, for us, I'm doing it for the family. So it's not because we don't care why we somehow ignore, seemingly ignore what it is you're saying, right? Um, it's like sometimes we're wearing tunnel vision goggles and what we're seeing is only spreadsheets and dollar signs. Now, I don't, I know we shouldn't be doing that, but how else can we do our business? So I, I think there's a place for that. It's a place for that as long as we don't get, um, kind of out of balance. So I want you to, as a wife, to not jump to conclusion that your husband doesn't care, that your husband is really um, all about himself and selfish and, and all the different labels that you may come up with. Let me just encourage you to guard against that, right? Talk to him. Ask about his anxieties. Ask about his goals. Ask those questions because sometimes you have to pull that out of him. I was speaking to a husband. I mean, actually, this is not the only husband who have said this to me. He said that, you know, he finds it easier when his wife, and that's true for me, when his wife asks him questions, 
and then he is able to respond. But it's very challenging for him to just present that way without her asking. So um, I want you to ask him about his anxieties, his goals. Uh, ask him about the dreams that keep him up past bed night, right? I mean, bed night, midnight. The the, the dreams that pa- that keep him, him up past midnight. And, and, and it's not a dream about the one about conquering Mount Laundry that he may hear from you, right? It's just a, the dream about the business and the family and what he has in mind. So that's the first thing I want you to do is basically recognize who your husband is in this, right? I also want you to remember this. Your husband, um, uh, he's been fueled by what he believes as a man, a husband, a kingdom husband, one who God has called to be the leader, the head of the household, and the one who is providing for his family. He's been driven by his faith, right? His faith and his belief in God, and you know that more than anybody else, that it's what often is fueling his business fire because he wants to be a good steward of what God has blessed him with, his skills and his ability to communicate and interact and and basically do business. So he wants to do be a good steward of that. And in his attempt to do that, he needs your support, right? So that business he's building is not just about the bottom line, right? But for him, it's about leaving a legacy of love and faith um, and maybe it's a sprinkling of cryptocurrency, <laughs> right? So here's what I believe that he's wanted to fulfill. As Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, the heart of man plants his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. He believed that as he does his part, God would establish his steps. Here's the second part that I want to mention about, um, and that's building harmony, not hostility. So what your husband needs to know that you're on the same side with him. He wants to feel supported, right? As you've heard many times, it may be cliche and a bit cheesy, but it really makes um, the point that teamwork makes the dream work, right? You're not competitors. And so your husband wants to feel as if you're complimenting him, meaning that you are, you know, not just in words, but you're complimenting him as a a partner, right? Your teammates. So what you want to be able to do then is brainstorm solutions together. See if there's something your husband might need from you and possibly brainstorm that because I believe you may have great ideas that he may never have thought about. So if you brainstorm those ideas, but also celebrate his victories, celebrate them like that they're your own because, hey, they kind of are. They, you know, it's not just him. And then be his cheerleader not not his drill sergeant drill sergeant because sometimes that's what he feels he feels like he's been drilled and grilled and you know um instead of feeling like he has been acknowledged and admired and and you're cheerleading him um cheerleading for him right it's very important so not only the teamwork aspect but remember communication is key and not just for yelling it's not just for yelling so when you're with your husband um, in the times you do have with him, may I suggest that you put your phone down, make eye contact with him and listen. So Kingsley, what, what about his, his doing that? Well, maybe he's doing that because you're doing that. Or maybe you might want to bring that to his attention that you want to spend some time with him. Just the both of you. Maybe if he hears from you that you truly admires him and wants him and desires him, he may put his phone down. He may want to engage with you. So when you're listening to him, make sure you're really listening, not just to the words, but listen to the emotions. You know, it's important to understand that your husband has emotions. You know, I did uh, a video on my YouTube channel some time back that men has feelings too. Men has feelings too. This idea that some men doesn't have feelings is nonsense, right? You know that. But because, so when he's sharing with you some things, See if you can pick up on the emotions behind them and become curious, right? But I also want you to, that when you see him in in his silence mode, um, it's not because he's indifferent or doesn't care. Could it be that he's just exhausted? So what about even a simple, you know, I'm here for you, honey. 
Um, I'm, you know, whatever you you need from me, I'm here. I want you to know that. Imagine just saying those words to him, honey. You know, I want you. I want you to know you work hard. I know you're you're really pushing for this business, and I want you to know I'm here for you. How can I assist you? How can I help you in this matter? That, my friend, that will go a very long way. What that will do is fuel his confidence and also your connection. And then I want you to also respect the hustle. Remember, he's building this business um, as a legacy, brick by entrepreneurial brick, right? So I want you to, to recognize that this is important for him. And it's good every now and then to acknowledge and respect his work ethic, his drive, even if it interferes with possibly a plan that you may have that particular week. Now, I'm not saying this should be a habit. I'm not saying this should be that everyday thing. No, there's are exceptions. But when he does, every now and then, it's good to hear from you. Remember now, a happy, fulfilled hubby is a better husband and father than one who feels like he's drowning in guilt and resentment. So what we've done in this episode is talked about understanding his hustle communicating um, like two adults, right? Minus in the eye, the eye rolls, of course, and working together as a team. Remember that a thriving family isn't built on perfection. And you know this, right? What What is it built on? It's built on love. It's built on support um, and maybe a little bit of flexibility and understanding from your husband. So I would love for you that as you listen to this, I want you to let me know what part of this resonates with you. Any questions you may have. I mean, you can always send me a direct message on Instagram or Facebook. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what it is you heard in this episode today. I believe we can really build a strong community. And that's why I'm really focused on this kingdom um kingdom husband. And I want to create for him this safe space where we can together learn some things, support one another, and become the better husbands that you would like to see and God would have us to become. You know, I love this quote that says, um, a happy family is not about being perfect. It's about accepting each other and working together through the good times and the bad times. So, you know, let's be honest. There will be bad times, right? Um, But together, you can build a kingdom that thrives on love or a business or a home. I see this kingdom to mean your business, your home, right? You can build that that thrives on love and laughter and maybe a little bit of duct tape. (laughs) So I would love to actually hear from you about this and I truly believe that your, um, when it comes to your husband, this kind of support, if you help him in this area, it's a win for everyone. You win, he wins, the family wins, right? I would I'd love you to, for you to experiment with this. So let me hear your thoughts on this. Again, you can direct message me and direct message me um, on Instagram and let me hear your thoughts. Okay, I also did a video of the a video to uh, match this podcast as on my YouTube channel, and if you want to watch that, you can always go there and just search for Kingsley Grant, and you will find that video channel, and you are can watch this video, which has a lot more editing, you know, visuals, and it tells the story. But also, there are other videos I have on there. I have a um, one of my shorts or two of my shorts have gone viral. One is over one point three million views and the other is over 300,000 views. And you can go and check that check that out and see they're 15 seconds long so you can watch it in no time. Let me encourage you to to join me there. And when you do go there, can I ask you to subscribe? Just subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. It's one way for this channel to grow and for YouTube to allow the channel to be seen by so much so many other people. So I want to say thank you in advance and I really uh, know that you'll do that because I believe that you are that kind of person. So thank you for taking the time to listen. 
and um, to this episode. And please share this with at least one other person. Can you, would you? Maybe if you are a wife, um, other wife listening to this, share this with your husband and have a conversation about it. If your husband listening to this podcast, why not share this with your wife and then have a conversation about it and to see what happens. And let me know. Let me know how that goes. Okay? I look forward to hearing from you. Now here is the announcer. We've come to the end of another exciting show. And if you enjoyed this podcast, one, make sure you give this show a rating and review. Two, subscribe to the show to get all new releases. And three, get your complimentary copy of the Five Secrets to a Happier Marriage ebook at kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. Again, it's kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. See the link in the show notes. Do it today. Don't delay. Thanks so much for listening and make sure you tell one other spouse about this show or better yet, share it with them. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you his peace both now and forever.